The debate over if Nanotyrannus is a valid genus or not is an intense one. It all started back in 1942 when David Dunkel assigned CMNH 7541 to Gorgosaurus. The skull later moved to Albertosaurus in 1970, and Robert Bacher coined Nanotyrannus in 1988, based on how thin the skull was compared to other Tyrannosaurs. Supporters of Nanotyrannus cited the Jane specimen for a while, saying that it was an adult of the species. Erickson 2003 demonstrated, through examining growth lines, that Jane was in fact a 12-year-old Tyrannosaurus rex. Thomas Carr's presentation at a Society of Vertebrate Paleontology convention in 2015 further proved that she was no more than an ontogenetic sample. Sorry Jane, it's not personal. So, why not use growth line measurements to check CMNH 7541 and settle the question once and for all? Because lines of arrested growth, or lags, are subject to compression when exposed to deforming pressure. Skulls, especially Tyrannosaurus skulls, are structured for the purpose of applying and resisting pressure, so the lags would be too wonky to get an accurate measurement. The ideal bone for that type of analysis would be, say, a fibula, which is what Gregory Erickson used to determine the age of Jane. So, what other options do we have? Science, what you got for me? Hmm. It looks like adult T-Rexes have less tooth positions on their mandibular areas, as opposed to, like, their ears, than Nanotyrannus. But, Thomas Carr demonstrated in a 1999 paper titled Craniofacial Ontogeny in Tyrannosauridae that the number of teeth decrease with maturity in Gorgosaurus, casting doubt on that line of evidence. How about neural morphology? There is a disjoint between optic nerve and blood vessel arrangements in the respective skulls of Nanotyrannus and T-Rex. However, they can easily be blamed on ontogeny. Something perhaps more difficult to disprove is Peter Larson's 2013 claim. He argues in the study, The Validity of Nanotyrannus Lensensis, that it has proportionally larger hands. Ontogenetic changes might be able to account for that as well, however, since as T-Rex became older, its head increased in relative size and became more of a primary bone-crushing weapon. It makes sense that as its body changed, so would its niche. It's not a phase, Mom. That about covers it for specimens that are scientifically accessible. The rumored Bloody Mary Nanotyrannus is in a conveniently private location, away from eyes who know what to look for. The current consensus among the majority of paleontologists is that Nanotyrannus is merely a juvenile T-Rex, and growth is an effective tool for warping our interpretations of fossil animals. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more paleontology content. Vividen out.